Time for Mr. Truck, reviewing the latest innovations for your truck and trailer. Hello and welcome to the second day of coverage from the Chicago Auto Show. Today we're going to start our day off from Toyota. Toyota has launched brand spanking new-ish 2021 models of the Tacoma, Tundra, and 4Runner. So what's changed? Well, let me tell you, not a whole heap of a lot of nothing. What you get is some special editions. And by special means they give you a slightly different version of the exact same truck you've been buying for a while. Slap some new parts on it and call it new. No offense, Toyota, but it's nothing truly all that extra new about it. It's some neat stuff. Unfortunately, it does tend to get rid of some of the usability of the truck. And you're probably wondering, well, what the hell's he bitching about? What's the stuff that is on the damn thing? Well, I'm glad you asked. In the Taco and the Tundra, you get yourself a cooler on the one side of the bed and a storage area on the other side. The downside is, as you can see, it tends to reduce the actual usability of the bed. Yeah, cool, but eh. On the Forerunner, however, you do get a Yakima rack on the roof and you get your very own Toyota cooler. And it happens to be on this, I would admittedly, cool slide-out rack in the backside. But, the you do get this new game that you can play when you uh, get into the truck. But as soon as you beat it, it is kind of however. It's a game that uh, is going to wear yourself out pretty quick. It's called, Where's the Drain on the Cooler? After that... After you find the drain, there, there's supposed to be a drain in there, but I couldn't find it, and I had a friend try to help, and he couldn't find it neither. Uh, thankfully, they're based off the SR5 line, which is the entry lineup on this, so it shouldn't cost too much extra, which is kind of on the nice side of things. Um, pricing hasn't been released. I'm willing to bet it doesn't affect towing. It's, just, you know, another option package. Not really a whole great big deal there. Also released at the same time was the 2020 Toyota Highlander Hybrid XSE. Um, I don't know what they tow, but uh, they are pretty neat. So, I mean, I'll, I'll give them that. Uh, next up, walking around the Ford area, well, there is this lovely F-150 done up in the Harley Davidson. This is actually a uh, 5.0 Coyote with the 10 speed done up by Harley. And uh, it's got about a six inch lift on there. I think it's at a 35 inch tall tires. But the crown glory of this whole thing is that great big old Whipple supercharger. And that sucker, it produces a very, very healthy 700 plus horsepower. Now, it is nice to see actual V8s getting some love because as much as an EcoBoost might have a whole lot of power, it is unfortunate, but I do love the sound of a V8. Thankfully, you can actually take heat out of the doggone engine bay through the little side extractors there. So, I mean, that's kind of nice and they actually tell you what's going on under the hood. It looks kind of pretty. Walking around, you can see a regular F-250 looks like next to the Tremor underside actually has a dana 60 in the front end with a limited slip actually has uh some protection on the underside sitting on 35s pretty neat and the gm lineup take a look at this big old son of a gun it's a 2500 powered by a duramax sitting on mat tracks jacked up man that thing looks good that at4 model man yeah just look at it. Ain't she pretty? The all mountain HD. Oh, man. I don't know where I'd use it, but I should like to. Now, if you are curious as to what exactly is underneath these trucks as they go down the road, well, take a look up. You got your 10 speed Allison automatic. Not a whole lot of protection on this particular one, but 
I, I like seeing what's underneath there. They had some AT4 uh, GMCs out on display. The the Denali Yukon. Uh, this case, it would be the Yukon XL is on display. I uh, got a video that's in the works that should be able to explain more what's going on in the GMC lineup here. But uh, they had some special edition trucks on display. Their Carhartt Edition, which uh, it's got some accents on the inside that are supposed to look like their actual jackets and whatnot. Not a bad looking truck. Up next is the Z71 Chevrolet Tahoe. Got some pretty decent protection going on on the underside there. Has uh, three different engine options. Got the 5.3, the 3.0 diesel, and the 6.2 big block gas. Now again, this is another one of those we have another video that is on the Tahoe and the Suburban there. And there are, uh, if you want to know more about that, of what we know at, the t at this time, feel free to go ahead and uh, check out the other video on the channel. I, I reckon I'll put the, the link in the description to it there. As I walked on over to the, uh, the Fiat Chrysler area, they had a nice little display going on where they go ahead and show off the flexing of their, their pickup trucks there. Now this is not an off-road edition here, but uh, I gotta say it it will get in a in a twist pretty good and get itself out of it. So I, I guess you could say that's the the pleasure of modern traction control systems. Walking on over, you see some of the Jeep stuff, and uh, this one caught my eye because it had a wheelchair in the backside. But the real thing that was going on over at Fiat Chrysler today was the release of the Mojave edition of the Jeep Gladiator. This particular gladiator, you're probably wondering what's so special about this one. Well, I can explain it real simple. Take a Rubicon, keep the same axles, swap out the transfer case for the regular model, put some orange accents on it instead of red, give it some fancy stitching in the seats, and that's really about it. Um, it's got a 1,200 pound payload and 6,000 pounds worth of towing. It, again, not bad, not class leading, but not bad. Uh, the interior colors, they offer black or gray, and the gray is supposed to help keep your backside a little cooler when you're out in the hot, hot, hot asset sun. Now, suspension wise, they did do a little bit more to it. They put on a set of fox shocks front and rear to actually help you get through the whoops and the dunes and they actually allow the rear end to be locked because it's only got a rear locker the front is open so the rear locker will actually be allowed to stay engaged even in high speeds it won't disconnect like a lot of the electronic locking differentials uh, for the most part, I've found that around about 20 miles an hour, they disconnect and it kind of relies on traction control after that and will re-engage after. In the Rubicon model, you can't actually use the rear or front lockers unless you're in four low. At least on this one, they're giving you the option of throwing the rear locker on in four high. You can't use it in two-wheel drive like you can on the Ranger, but it is definitely an improvement of uh, uh, things that you can do with your jeep not a bad truck yeah the hood scoop on the top isn't functional but it's not a bad deal it probably uh appeal to more folks underside got some good protection going on you know again it's it's pretty similar to the actual uh rubicon itself but the other thing that they released was the elevation package on the gladiator and the wrangler all you need to know about this, it's a city Jeep. Get you them big old 20s on there. The biggest rims they've ever thrown on a Jeep. They gave you a really nice new good looking color. Not bad. It's kind of pretty. Uh, and they've they've basically taken the, the Jeep and they've made it for the folks exclusively in the city. And that's pretty much what it is. It's a high end model and it's meant for those that are taking off the regular jeep wheels and throwing on the the big old rims and the street tires and 
So they're just trying to appeal to a wider audience. If, if it doesn't appeal to you, then it's one of those things that didn't build it for you. They uh, have plenty of other Jeeps in their lineup that they'd be happy, happy, happy to sell you. But that will pretty much wrap it up for today. Stay tuned. We've got more coverage from the uh, 2020 Auto Show. Got uh, kind of highlights of stuff that caught my eye uh, coming up next. So y'all have a great day. Be safe. And we'll catch you up on the flip. Bye-bye.